Okay, hello, this is Dr. Hudson, and today we're talking with Mr. Tim Reese, and he is the Director of Undergraduate uh, Resident Admissions at Liberty University. So hello, Mr. Reese. Um, we're very happy hello, to have you. Um, thank you for doing this interview with us. Uh, thank you for allowing us to, to talk with your students. We really appreciate the opportunity. Okay, so let's jump right in. And um, if you could tell us a little bit about Liberty University. Okay, great. Uh, let me start off with the fact that Liberty is a very young school. We've only been around since 1971. Um, so an infant as far as schools go. Mm -hmm. um, we are located in Virginia, which is on the east coast of the U.S. So our school is about three and a half hours south of Washington, D.C. Uh, we are also very near some of what on the east coast we call mountains. Folks from the west coast would call them hills because they're very small mountains. Uh, we're right in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, if anyone's checked their geography and kind of knows where that is. Um, we're also about four hours uh, inland from the beach, so Virginia Beach, Nags Head, those kind of areas on the East Coast that a lot of folks like to vacation at. So there's lots of variety as far as geography around where we are. Um, specifically where we are, we do have, again, some smaller mountains, a little bit of rock climbing and trails and things like that for people to get involved in if they like the outdoors. Uh, our campus is just over 7,000 acres, uh, so we have quite a few trails for biking, hiking, uh, those kind of things. Uh, other activities we have on campus, because again, we are somewhat considered a rural area, although the city we are in is around 70,000 people. There's no interstate here, so uh, we're somewhat <laughs> cordoned off from things. But So we like to have a lot of attractions on campus. We are, as far as I know, the only school... Um, south of the Mason Dixon line that has their own ice hockey rink on campus because we have club sports for men and women's hockey. Um, they're nice. very good and competitive. We have a lot of students from Canada, so they like to play hockey, but the ice rink is open for students for ice skating. There's a uh, ice skating team, ice dance team, so forth. Um, we also have a snowless ski slope. So it's made out of a material that's a synthetic, um, sort of like, plastic, but it's not, uh, but it stays lubricated with water, and so you can ski year-round. So we oh, have wow. <laughs> more, uh, snowboarding teams and so forth that compete there as well. Uh, then on campus, if you're into traditional college athletics, we have 20 NCAA Division One teams. Uh, our football team is transitional uh, to the FBS ranks, which is the same, you know, Baylor, Notre Dame, all those play at that level. Uh, we're still transitioning to that. We're in a, uh, there's a two-year period for us to transition up to that level, um, but we'll be there in two more years. Um, so we're working on that. Uh, but all our other sports are already at Division One uh, as far as tournament eligibility and things like that. So there's lots of sports teams to cheer on, um, lots of men's and women's sports, a lot of other activities as far as that goes as well. So, again, whether you're into outdoors or just watching and cheering people on, a lot of things involving club sports. Uh, we have – almost 40 of those and by this fall we'll have close to 50 so there's lots of different things from archery to paintball equestrian lots of different things people get involved in uh, from an athletic standpoint uh, and then of course you know, athletics is not your thing we have lots to do with the arts and recreation like that so we do have a, a very good drama department uh, we put on several plays both student-led and then there's also a professional performance company there that works out of that same theater um, produces uh, lots of great productions for students and, of course, the community to come participate and watch and see. Um, so again, the, the school itself, even though it's 7,000 acres, it's still pretty close-knit. We have about 15,000 students on campus um, and a little over 90,000 online. So wow. a very large school in that perspective, um, but very small in how we uh, tend to treat students. So it doesn't seem overwhelming. So you have the benefits of a larger uh, state institution, but um, with more of the uh, amenities and so forth and, and the classroom size that you would expect from a private institution. So nice. hopefully that helps a little bit with at least some of the broad outline of, of what the school looks like. Yes, it does. Um, okay. So you mentioned the drama department. Um, what other um, majors or areas of study do you have at Liberty? Great question, because we are a liberal arts institution, so we cover a wide variety of areas. Uh, our top uh, 
degree programs are in business, so business administration, nursing. Uh, we have, uh, it's a difficult program, and it's very competitive, but uh, they usually do really well. They do, in our nursing program, three years of clinical, where most programs are only doing two years. So uh, a lot of our graduates go on to places like Duke University Hospital, places like that. They'll hold some spots for them to begin a master's program there because they know they've already been through a lot of the rigor as far as um, their rounds on the floors and so forth. Um, also, psychology is a big one. Uh, a lot of the biomedical sciences, criminal justice, we have a lot of professors that are, have either been in FBI or military, you know, type of in security situations. So they have a lot of context that way. So we have folks that go on to either law enforcement or, you know, like I said, FBI, CIA kind of thing that they'll do. Uh, and then also exercise science, which so that's kind of a gamut. Um, additionally, outside of that, we have programs in law. We have a law school. We also uh, have an osteopathic medicine uh medical school that's opened up uh, a lot of our uh, not a lot of our students but some of our students will complete like say a biology major in undergrad and then go on to the medical school um, and osteopathic how that's different from any others I guess is it's more of a whole body wellness type of thing they look more at being proactive and whole body health versus just treating the condition so it's kind of different everybody's wondering well what's that between a normal medical doctor that, that's kind of the difference um, and so they have that uh, they're up on the, the mountain as well. So um, on the undergrad side, like I said, we have over 200 programs of study on the undergrads. Uh, for graduate, we have a little over 140. And right now we only have four doctoral programs residentially. Most of our doctoral programs are online. But again, because most of those folks tend to be older, and so they can't really get up and move and, and come to this little town. So <laughs> thank you. All right. Um, now, you mentioned that you have um, on campus and you also have online. Um, are both of those options open to undergrad? And if so, um, like, is a combination possible or do you have to choose one or the other? That's a great question. Uh, actually, a lot of our programs are available in both formats. Um, one of the advantages for potential participate with our online program is we do have a very large contingent of military personnel who study with us online because obviously they're stationed elsewhere. They can't really get out to a campus, so they'll do it online. Uh, it's asynchronous learning, so it fits your schedule rather than having to be in a classroom at a set time. Uh, you do have assignments that are due each week, but as long as you make progress towards completing those, your timing of that is typically yours. Uh, there are some classes where there are some requirements, and every once in a while there will be group discussions where you kind of meet as a group to discuss things and go over them. Um, but a lot of our programs are available that way. We uh, encourage students to even begin with dual enrollment. We have associate programs uh, that students can get involved with mm -hmm. and then uh, transfer those into our residential program. We have students that do that. Um, we even have uh, a high school program. So it's all the way from kindergarten up through 12th grade. It's meant more for homeschool students you know, here in the U.S., but they do take those same studies elsewhere. Um, that is fitting both for a homeschool lifestyle and also for an extremely active lifestyle. So, for instance, we have a young gentleman who um, he is now in the college level, but he was in high school. Uh, he was a driver, not on the NASCAR circuit, but on one of the junior circuits, wow. trying to make his name to be to move up into that. And so, of course, that schedule of practicing and moving every week, he didn't have time to be in his traditional school situation, uh, and so he took part in that. We have. Um, some Olympic type athletes that are also doing that type of thing because it fits their training regimen. So uh, we have lots of options across that uh, spectrum. And again, for the online side, the only thing I could say that might be, again, beneficial for uh, military or military affiliated, so students of military parents, is there is a discount for military students on the online side. It's not on the resident side, but uh, for online, they have a discounted tuition rate. So. Definitely something worth looking into, especially if someone wants to think about dual enrollment. Um, again, we're accredited through SACS, which is the regional accrediting body for right. here in the southeastern U.S. Um, so those trans those uh, courses will transfer to any school. So again, even if your ultimate end or, or goal isn't to come to Liberty residentially, uh, anywhere else you go, those trans those classes will transfer. Nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if I'm looking at Liberty and um, I am really enjoying all of the um, extracurriculars they have, uh, they have the major that I'm looking at, how would I prepare myself um, to be a, a worthy candidate or an excellent candidate to be selected for admission? That's a great question. Now, 
we do things a little differently here because we do have a broad spectrum of folks. Again, homeschool, um, traditional public school, uh, private schools. So while we don't require a specific set of courses, we do, of course, recommend you know, English, math, those kind of things that are going to tend to prepare you for a general liberal arts education. What we typically tell students is to do your best. Because again, not everyone is made to math. <laughs> not everyone is made to do certain things. Um, and so we want to look at the whole individual and not say, well, you have to have taken trigonometry or you can't come to our school. Um, because again, it's not, it's not for everyone and we do want to look at the whole person. Again, though, we do want you to do your best. So putting your best foot forward, presenting the best grades possible, um, taking a rigorous academic curriculum is best. Um, because again, when we go at the committee and we're looking at two different files, someone who just took the basic courses and did well, but, you know, I won't say got by, it may be the best they can do, but if you then compare that to someone who took honors or AP coursework, maybe their GPA is a little lower, but they did do uh, something that's more rigorous. We know they're better prepared uh, for college level work because again, the, the work itself is so, you're so independent. You have to be motivated to do it and to go in and actually seek advice, seek, you know, mm -hmm. seek out the professor when you need help, which is somewhat different from most high school experiences because then you have the teacher saying, this is the assignment, this is when it's due, and reminding, where the college is not like that. So someone that can go in and uh, spend the time on the honors coursework, the AP coursework, uh, take flat tests, all those kind of things are showing motivation and preparedness that they do well enough. Uh, and then we can see, hey, this student has done well. Here's a score you know, that they received. Uh, again, either CLEP or, or AP. You know, we can then work out credits and so forth, but then we know that they're going to do well when they get here because, again, it does take a lot of self-motivation, especially your first semester or two. Everything's new. Um, so we kind of look, again, more holistically, but we really would look for uh, someone that has shown some preparation. Um, in addition to academics, again, we're talking about the whole person, um, we do tend to look at other activities. So uh, if someone is involved in extracurriculars, what we might want to know is the length of time that they've been involved in that. Um, what kind of honors and awards have they earned? So especially if it's an activity that is really uh, you're passionate about, mm -hmm. that should show up. There should be evidence of that. In other words, if you're in an organization for three years, show what is it you've done with the organization. Those kind of things help. I believe just about any school, but they will definitely help here as well. Okay. Now, do you require an SAT or ACT score? Right now, for admission, we do look at one or the other. We also look at one additional. It's a newer test. It's called the CLT. It's really more for those in a classical learning situation, because it's what's the classic learning test. Um, so we will accept that score as well for admission, but one of those three. Okay. Um, and like most schools, we will super score, so we'll take the better of. Um, if you've sat for the SAT twice, mm -hmm. we'll take the better of the evidence-based reading and writing and then the math. And we'll combine those to come up with your best possible composite score. Uh, same with the ACT. We'll take all four batteries. If you've taken it twice, we'll um, move across those two tests to see which one was the better score for you and come up with a, a super scored composite. Okay, um, great. We do look for those. All right. Um, now, you talked about like a student doing their best and how you look at each child or each student um, individually. Um, but to, to give us kind of a gauge of the caliber or the level of students um, that you accept at Liberty, do you have any information about the most recent uh, class that you um, admitted into Liberty University? That's a great question. I do have that with me. So these are averages. So again, know that that's pretty much the, the middle. So above and below will we'll be fine. So the average GPA for our 2016 incoming class was a 3.49 on an unweighted 4.0 scale. So if you've taken AP and honors coursework, you might be used to having those courses weighted. We will unweight those to, uh, to arrive at a GPA that we can make level across uh, all different learning types. Uh, but that's what it was, 3.49. Uh, for the SAT, this one's a little difficult because this is the old SAT. We didn't have very many that took the new SAT prior to coming in last year. Uh, but their score on that scale was a 1060. Okay. Uh, and then for the ACT, the average was a 23. Um, so far this year with the new SAT, uh, our average is running more around 1150. 
uh, and the ACT is up around a 24. Uh, but that's as of right now. That's for the class as it's crafted at the moment. We still have a couple more thousand students to go before we'll be done. But uh, we should end up at or just above those marks by the time we're done for fall 17. Okay. Um, we do have a question from a student. Uh, this is from Avery. And um, Avery is interested in the Liberty um, ROTC program, if you have one. And specifically, she is interested in the application process and the benefits of obtaining an ROTC scholarship. Okay, those are great questions, Avery. And I will let you know that we do have two separate uh, cohorts or cadres of uh, ROTC. One is Air Force, and then we have an Army ROTC. Unfortunately, we don't have Navy. That's the one we don't have. Uh, but both of those components, they do meet on campus. They do a lot of their um, PT and training together. But then they are all also, uh, they work with different schools as well. So in other words, I uh, believe, believe actually both of them are working in conjunction with the University of Virginia in their cohort. So it makes a little bit larger cadre. You have a little bit more broader um, group of people involved, and you get to work with one another people they don't see ordinarily each day. So, uh, but yeah, both those are very active on campus. Um, outside of ROTC, we do have some veterans groups that I failed to mention earlier, some students that help support uh, the military. Uh, and they'll send care packages and so forth to different units and groups around the world. But that aside, for the ROTC portion, uh, there is a separate process. You would need to talk to our ROTC office, uh, but they would help get you set up with that. There's obviously you know, scholarship opportunities with that. Um, some are very generous. Uh, again, the benefit of being in a program like that, regardless of the scholarship, is the leadership opportunities that you get through that. Um, a lot of good practice in how to lead others and how to lead them properly. Yes. Um, sometimes in the military, as I was there myself, well, you have poor examples of leadership. They just lead by virtue of their rank, and they expect you to just answer to them where, as while that is the structure of the military, there are also perhaps better ways to lead people in general, especially in a civilian sense. So this kind of helps you build those skills uh, so that when, when you do take on a commission and that and those kind of things, you'll be well-trained and well-ready to take on those responsibilities. Okay. Um, do you know if the scholarship, the ROT scholarships, does it cover like tuition or books or uh, room and board? Or are there yeah, different I, levels? I, yeah, I believe as far as it goes, is more to the the, uh, the books and, of course, tuition. Uh, I'm not so sure on the tuition, uh, the room and board, actually. So okay. you've got me there on that one. I'd have to look on our website to, to be more clear on that. Um, but the... Uh, but there is a the website. Shelf, there is a website uh, for the ROTC? Yes, ma'am. Right on, right on our, uh, from our liberty.edu website. Just type in ROTC in the search bar, and it will bring up, uh, should bring up both the Army Battalion and then the, the Air Force uh, okay. component as well. Uh, but there's one office where both work out of, so the recruiter or the uh, um, the folks that run the program work out of that office. Mm -hmm. um, again, realizing that some of them are active duty, sometimes they aren't here all the time, but right. be persistent. And if you're not getting an answer, contact our office. We'll be glad to, to run that down for you because, again, we're here. We can probably find them when you may not be able to. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we'll give some of that contact information a little later, too, so everyone can have that if they would like that. Great. Okay. Um, are there any um, parting words of wisdom or anything else you would like to add about Liberty University? Um, well, I would probably, this is probably a somewhat more general, but uh, probably things that you already told them before about doing well. Um, high school, the whole 9th through 12th grade experience, it does count and it does matter. People will look at that for better or for worse. Um, most of the time, though, I, I would say that even if something has gone wrong, don't try and hide it. Just be upfront about it, be honest about it, and then try and get out of that situation. We have plenty of folks who maybe ninth or 10th grade struggled, uh, but then they regained their balance in junior year and then, of course, senior year. And as long as you can see that in the transcript, it's reflected in the work the person has done, um, you know, you, you can usually overcome those things and still have a good outcome. But, um, again, do your best. If, if you know, AP and honors course work is for you, do as much of that as you can. Don't say, well, I will just take the easier course and get the better grade because in the end, you're not challenging yourself. And again, that's what life is about, frankly. You have to uh, accept the challenges that are thrown your way. And the only way to do that is start tackling them now in high school. Right. 
Great advice. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would agree, since I'm sure you've said that many times. Thank yes. <laughs> well, I thank you very much for your time today. Um, this has thank been very you. informative. Okay, good. Good. Yes. And uh, as I mentioned before, um, I'm not sure about toll-free numbers and how they might work from there. I guess you just dial uh, international code and mm-hmm. uh, call in, but we have a toll-free number. The hours would be a little difficult because of the time delay, but... Uh, our inner number is 800-543-5317, and you should be able to get a hold of one of our counselors at any time. We're staffed East Coast time from 8 in the morning until 9 p.m., so there are folks even available right now for about another 20 minutes. Right. Um, they'd be glad to answer questions. And if that doesn't work, we do have email and chat as well. Um, those are accessible right there on our website. Uh, send that to it any time, and we'll respond and try and answer the questions. Um, so, again, hopefully this was helpful to you and look yes. forward to the conversation. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good okay, day. Thank you. See you soon.